Ah, clinician who does not deserve a license told you that your pain is because of the very thing that would freaking help you in the first place. This drives me insane. I can't stand this. Do you have a short leg? Did your chiropractor or physical therapist tell you that you have one leg that's shorter than the other one? Did they tell you that that means that your pelvis is rotated a bad way and that's causing your back pain or neck pain? Have you ever seen an image like this where you have essentially a human body showing that, oh, if one thing is off, you know, in the feet or the hips or anything, that everything else from head to toe is gonna be off and that's gonna result in pain. I'm Dr. Anthony Davis. I'm a chiropractor. I went to school with a lot of people who don't know what the F they're talking about and promoted this garbage. So if your therapist told you you have a short leg, they don't know what they're talking about. Let's explore the research on leg length inequality. So first of all, we have a couple of issues with this whole leg length inequality thing, which one is the assessments that we actually use in clinic to determine whether or not you have a short leg or not. And two is if you do have one leg that is slightly shorter than the other, does it matter? So first of all, we wanna know if the tests that we're doing in clinic actually can elicit leg length changes. If you have a chiropractor or physical therapist who has evaluated your leg length, they may have done something where where they check your leg length and then they might poke you in the back or poke you on the glutes or around the neck or have you turn your head one way um, and then look at your leg length and they say, oh, turn your head the other way. Now let's look at your leg length. And they're trying to see if any of those things change your leg length because that supposedly is telling them where in your body the um, misalignment is in your spine that they need to quote correct, which by the way, all this is total garbage, but I'm gonna show you the research. Don't just take my word for it. Okay, so part of this theory about leg length being off and that affecting the rest of your body is coming from the idea that we can elicit writing reflexes, which is a neonatal reflex, meaning that's a reflex that babies have. So this writing reflex basically shows us that um, your body, when you're an infant, really wants to be level. It wants to keep your head level. Um, and so if you mess with a baby, like you can see in this picture right here, um, and by holding them belly up, they're gonna stiffen like a board. It's kind of cool. It's a reflex. They're not in control of this. Now, the chiropractors or physical therapists that are doing these tests are trying to elicit um, a reflex that does not exist in adults. So first of all, they didn't even read their basic neuroanatomy um, textbooks because they would know that neonatal reflexes disappear at, uh, whenever you're not an infant. So, and if, and if any of these reflexes that are um, present in babies, if they stick around or if we see them in adults, that is a major, major medical problem. They probably have a systemic uh, neuromotor disease. That is not a, not a good thing at all. So first of all, any of these reflexes that they claim they're trying to elicit, they don't even exist in adults. So these people, I, I don't understand. They don't know what they're talking about. So again, when we're looking at leg length inequality, we wanna know a few things. One, can we even measure it accurately? Can we, in the clinic, measure your leg length? Second of all is do the tests that we we do in clinic actually affect your leg length? Can we change it? And then lastly, let's say we do find a legitimately short leg. Does it even matter? Okay, so can we measure your leg length inequality in clinic? Well, first of all, um, I didn't include any studies on this, but you absolutely can measure leg length inequality on an X-ray, but you would need an actual image of the body. Then yeah, sure, we could accurately measure the length of your legs. But in clinic, all we have are these tests where we kind of bend your knees and we look at your heels and if one heel's higher than the other, then one of the, the legs is shorter. Or we look at them with your legs straight and we look at your heels from top down and if one of your heels is forward to the other, then you supposedly have a short leg. Well, research on this shows that when your knees are bent, Absolutely not. We cannot determine whether you have a short leg here. It is unreliable. It is an unreliable test. Um, with straight knees, some of the research says that maybe we can do better than random chance that, yeah, we might be able to tell the difference if one leg is longer than the other, um, but that doesn't necessarily correlate to an x-ray that accurately measures it. It just means that two clinicians looking at the same two feet can both agree as to which heel is in front of the other. That's all that means. It doesn't mean that we can reliably 
guess the um, a true anatomical length of your leg. Now, uh, next is these tests that we do where we say, turn your head, and then that should change your leg length. And the uh, research clearly shows that this is a BS test, it is unreliable. So here are some snippets from the research in case you're wondering. So basically we cannot validate the isolation testing. We cannot use those tests to accurately give us any hope as to knowing where we should perform some kind of manual therapy or adjust the spine as a chiropractor. Even one of the guys himself who created a system that uses this uh, method, even he says it's a diagnostic illusion. So what's with that? The whole rotate your head thing and then let's look at your feet. Yeah, that doesn't work. That's not reliable. And then one last study did say that maybe we could tell if the heels are even or not even um, if the knees are straight, but that if the knees are bent, it's definitely unreliable. And lastly, in that study, they said every single participant was found to have a short leg. So either the clinicians who are doing the tests have a strong bias to, I'm gonna find a short leg whether it's there or not. So either the clinicians are wrong or everybody actually did have a short leg, in which case, who cares? So basically the only research that exists that actually is in favor of using some kind of leg length inequality test in clinic, um, or that, or saying that it matters somehow, the only test that we, or the only studies that we have that say that, they were not blinded studies, so they're not high quality studies. They weren't blinded, um, so they're, that introduces a lot of bias into the testing. They had major conflicts of interest where the authors of the study were, had a personal, uh, a monetary gain to be had by producing research that showed positive results because they owned a system that actually uses these protocols. Okay, so, and then we had um, disagreement as to what was actually happening in the body. And we, if we even saw any positive results, they were very weak correlations. So they really didn't produce much useful information anyway. So what I'm saying here is that when we had better studies, the better quality studies produced worse results and showed that leg length inequality testing and evaluation was really unreliable. Okay, so the testing doesn't really work, but let's say we used an X-ray on everybody to, which we shouldn't do, we should not do that. But if we did and we accurately had a length of their leg, or we at least used a tape measure, why are we not at least using a tape measure in clinic if we're trying to measure people's legs, right? That would be way more accurate than eyeballing it based on their heels. Well, do the stress tests that we do actually reveal joint restriction? So we wanna know, okay, so does leg length even matter? So we wanna know, do the stress tests that we do have any relevance for manual therapies? We would wanna know, well, if leg length inequality in your feet, let's say, your feet are off, then your pelvis is off, then your spine is off, then your head is off, so that should cause curvature in your spine, right? Well, does leg length inequality cause scoliosis? And then furthermore, well, let's say that it did, let's say leg length inequality does mess with your posture. Well, is there a correlation between bad posture and pain? And then let's say it was, let's say that it made you have terrible posture. Well, would that lead to disc degeneration, let's say? And if it did, would that even matter? Would that cause pain? And then at the end of the story, is it useful to use this and be talking about leg length inequality in a clinical setting? Does it matter? So let's start with, does leg length inequality cause scoliosis? Well, this study here showed that their uh, leg length inequality had a poor correlation with lumbar scoliosis. So essentially, no, it, there's not really a good correlation between having short leg and having a scoliosis. Next, does asymmetry actually matter to begin with? Well, what about this you know, Paralympic athlete who has a, an amputated leg, they have a prosthetic, talk about a leg length inequality, oh my goodness. Do you think that this person has more pain? Well, guess what? This person is running at a competitive level way more competitively and, and a much better athlete than you or I, most likely. Um, so does it matter? I don't think so, because if we have people that are performing amazing feats of human athleticism and they have prosthetics, then asymmetry alone 
is not really relevant. Okay, so if having a short leg throws your posture off, does that cause pain? Well, in marathon runners, we saw that a five to 25 millimeter um, leg length discrepancy, this was a truly an accurate measure, by the way, they, I think they used um, an x-ray to measure it, but the, an, a surgically short leg, right? did not cause any functional detriment to these marathon runners. So there was no reason to be using like a heel lift in your shoe on one side to correct your asymmetry. Now, a quick note, anything beyond about 25 millimeters, uh, yeah, we probably, we might benefit from using a lift. We might benefit from correcting it. But most people, if they do have a short leg, it's pretty, sh it's, it's, it's almost the same as the other side. It's just a little bit off. So we probably shouldn't do anything about it. But if you have a really, really, short leg, yeah, okay, fine, let's do something about it. So again, here's another study that looked at um, truly anatomical post-surgical leg length inequality, and essentially they said that, you know, up to uh, about two centimeters, so it agreed with this previous study, that about two centimeters is uh, close to about an inch in uh, difference between two legs. We don't need to do anything about it. Um, if it's more than that, then it's probably worth doing something about it. And then this study right here showed that there was no association between um, leg length inequality and low back pain. But just for the sake of argument, let's say that there was some correlation between having a short leg and some kind of, you know, a degeneration of the spine, let's say. Uh, well, would that even matter? Well, uh, this study here by Brinjikji um, showed a study of um, a bunch of people who had no pain whatsoever. You would expect that a person with no pain whatsoever would have a very good looking spine on an MRI. But what we found was that people with zero pain whatsoever actually had lots of degeneration, disc herniations, um, arthritis, that kind of stuff. And so, but none of them had back pain. So we cannot equate the tissue damage to pain necessarily. There are other factors that influence pain other than just structure alone. And uh, this other study here showed again, the association between you know, thoracic and lumbar posture and pain. And again, we found that essentially posture was not linked to pain. So if leg length inequality did cause some weird posture for you, then it probably wouldn't really matter. Okay, so should we fix a leg length inequality? Well, first of all, as we talked about, we can't even accurately measure it in clinic with our bare eyes, you know, with our eyeballs looking at your heels. That test does not work. Um, but let's say we could, well, should we fix it? Well, again, leg length inequality is not linked to scoliosis. Posture is not a causal source of pain. Tissue damage does not necessarily cause pain in and of itself. So, I mean, really, are we just looking for something to fix? so that we feel like we're doing something as chiropractors and physical therapists? Well, in my opinion, I think it just serves as a huge nocebic effect. It just scares patients. You tell them, oh, you're, you have a short leg, and then they get in their heads. Do you have any idea how many patients I've seen in clinic that come into me, and, and they come into clinic to see me, and they say, oh, I have a short leg and my pelvis is rotated, and that's why I have this low back pain for four years. That sucks. No, that's not why you have pain, first of all, and but I'm really, really frustrated that somebody scared you so much that you think that having a little bit of asymmetry is causing all of your pain. And now you're avoiding the movement, the activity um, that you love, like yoga or weightlifting or running, which, by the way, would be the way to fix your pain in the first place was just to go do activity. And now you're too scared because some Ah, clinician who does not deserve a license told you that your pain is because of the very thing that would freaking help you in the first place. This drives me insane. I can't stand this. So in my opinion, a professional, somebody who is really a professional, is not somebody who's gonna go around scaring the crap out of their patients. So saying, oh, you have a short leg? Well, first of all, that's a lie. Your test doesn't work and it doesn't matter. But now you've told them that it's gonna be causing their pain, which again is unlikely. Le research clearly shows that that's not the case, but it results in scaring the crap out of people. And here's some research on nocebic language. So a nocebo is the opposite of a placebo. A placebo is when somebody tells you, oh, this treatment is going to help you, but it's a fake treatment, but you still get better because you expected to get better. A nocebo is when somebody 
somebody tells you, this thing is bad for you, and then it's actually fine for you, but you now believe it's bad for you and it becomes bad for you and you have a, a, a negative effect. So if we tell you you have a short leg and it's causing your pain, guess what? That thought alone is gonna cause you pain. So what we found in research on nocevic language is that if clinicians are obsessed with structural causes of pain, it scares patients and it me leads to movement avoidance. We see that negative expectations can cause health problems. We see that health benefits that people experience clinically sometimes are due to a shift in mindset um, because they've been educated more so even than the actual activity that they are doing. I could go on and on, but the bottom line is we can't test for it accurately. It doesn't correlate well with pain and it just scares people. So there's no reason to be worried about having a short leg unless you have a like really, really short leg. Then sure, fine, do something about it. But if it's like less than an inch difference on a true anatomically measured, you know, either an x-ray or with a tape measure, not with the test where they just look at your heels, that doesn't work, then yeah, okay, maybe we can do something about it if it's more than an inch, but if it's less than an inch, ignore it. It doesn't matter. Get out there, run, jump, weight lift, do what you wanna do. If you have something that your clinician, your chiropractor, physical therapist has told you that you're like, ah, that doesn't really make sense, please comment below. I will make a video to myth bust this stuff that clinicians are scaring their patients with because we say a lot of really dumb stuff and it needs to stop. Thanks for watching. I'm Anthony Davis. Movement is medicine. So get out there and move your body every day.